Hello and welcome to Oweleke TV. My name is Antonia Mwokolo. The news headlines. Godwin Emefele in court to seek variation of bail conditions. Buhari defends Naira redesign claims it ensured clean elections. On the foreign scene, Trump criticizes George over funeral attendance during the formation trial. And in sports, Joseph Pissero sticks to game plan ahead of AFCON clash against Ivory Coast. Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.ubeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Ubeleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Welcome back. Now the news in details. The Nigerian government cautions against crowdfunding for ransoms, stressing that it worsens abduction crisis. The Minister of Defense, Abubakar Badaru, has issued a stern warning against the public crowdfunding of ransoms for kidnapped victims, emphasizing that such actions would exacerbate the prevailing trend of abductions. The minister made his announcement after a federal executive council meeting chaired by President Bola Tinubu at the presidential villa in Abuja. The caution follows reports that Nigerians had raised over 50 million naira through crowdfunding to pay the ransom for the release of the remaining five daughters of Mansour Al-Qadriya. The Al-Qadriya family experienced a tragic abduction incident in which six siblings alongside their father were taken from their home in Buari Council, Abuja, on December 26, 2023. Despite efforts to secure their release, the kidnappers who had demanded a ransom tragically killed one of the daughters, Nabiha, after the ransom was not raised. Minister Badaru expressed the government's deep concern about the kidnappings and stressed the resulting to public donations for ransom payments would worsen the situation. He reminded the public of the existing law against ransom payments and urged Nigerians to refrain from responding to such demands publicly. But I reasserted the government's commitment to starve kidnappers of the profits that fuel abductions, emphasizing that complying with ransom demands only perpetrates the cycle of abductions. He acknowledged the difficulty in implementing this approach, but emphasized its importance in curbing the kidnapping epidemic. Residents of Adei Avenue in Bodija, Ibadan, Oyo State, hold Malian illegal miners responsible for Tuesday night's explosion. In response to the tragic explosion that shook Ibadan, the Minister of Solid Minerals and Development, Dr. Dele Alake, has instructed mine officers of the ministry to launch an investigation into the incident. The directive issued on Wednesday in Abuja aims to uncover both the immediate and underlying causes of the explosion following reports suggesting a link to explosive devices stored by illegal miners. As information emerges about the aftermath, Oyo State Governor Shei Makinde disclosed that the blast resulted in at least two confirmed fatalities and left 77 individuals injured. 58 buildings were reported to have been damaged due to the explosion. Expressing condolences, Minister Alake commiserated with Governor Makinde and the people of Oyo State over the unfortunate incident. The joint efforts between the federal and state authorities seeks to provide a comprehensive understanding of the circumstances surrounding the explosion. Former President Mohamedou Buhari defends Naira redesign before the 2023 elections, cites clean elections outcome. In a newly unveiled book titled Working with Buhari, Reflections of a Special Advisor, Media and Publicity, 2015 to 2023, Buhari claims that the policy resulted in what he refers to as clean elections, although he did not provide specific details on the meaning of this term. The book was unveiled in Abuja on Tuesday, and in it, Buhari extensively discusses the controversial Naira redesign and addresses his decision not to dismiss the former CBN governor, Godwin Emefili. When he expressed his presidential aspirations, Buhari asserted that the Naira scarcity which has persisted was not intentionally implemented to punish Nigerians, contrary to some misconceptions. He emphasized that democracy allows people to express their will and the government did not attempt to confront them. Regarding Emefele's involvement in the 2023 presidential campaign, Buhari stated that he could not dismiss the former CBN governor as he was not informed by Emefele or any of his aides about the presidential aspirations. 
Buari explained his reluctance to take action without firm evidence, emphasizing the importance of fairness and the potential consequences of unjust punishment. Buhari also touched on the Nairi redesign policy, claiming that it resulted in cleaner elections. He noted that those who had excessive funds were the ones who had issues with it. He shared an incident where a significant amount of money was found with a bank chairman during the alleged unavail unavailability of the new notes. Let's go on a short break. We will be right back. Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.ubeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Ubeleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Welcome back. In response to recent bandit attacks in the federal capital territory, Minister Nye Somwike embarks on confidence-building visits to area councils. His visit to Buari Town, the headquarters of Buari Area Council, includes a town hall meeting with residents, traditional rulers and security personnel. Wike declares a strong stance against bandits and vows to equip security agencies adequately. During the town hall meeting, Wike assures the public of the government's commitment to securing lives and property. He emphasizes the need for collaboration between communities and security agencies, encouraging citizens to share information to combat banditry effectively. Wike also warns that informants aiding bandits will face consequences. He pledges to provide necessary equipment and support to security agencies, ensuring they have the resources needed to address the security challenges in the FCT. Wike concludes by reiterating the government's det determination to make the FCT a challenging environment for bandits. The federal government maintains that its student loan scheme will start this month, stressing that applicants can access funds within 30 days. The Minister of State for Education, Dr. Yusuf Sununu, reiterated the government's commitment to launching the student loan scheme during a briefing with the State House correspondents after the first Federal Executive Council meeting for 2024. The scheme, signed into law by President Bola Tinubu on June 12, 2023, aims to provide interest-free loans to indigent students. Sununu assured that the scheme is on track, with the website for applications almost completed. He emphasized that applicants could expect to assess the loans within 30 days after applying online. The minister clarified that the criteria for eligibility include securing admission, being in Nigeria, and attending a public school. He emphasized that the initiative is intended to increase and ease access to higher education for students in Nigeria, particularly in tertiary institutions. Godwin Emefele, former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, has appeared in court seeking a variation of his bail conditions. He is standing trial on six counts related to procurement fraud amounting to 1.2 billion naira. This marks the first appearance in court for Emefele without the presence of stern-looking armed security personnel guiding him to the courtroom. He was released from Kujie Custodial Center on December 23, 2023, 34 days after the judge granted him bail. In the current court session, Emefele is asking the court to review and modify some terms of his bail conditions. Justice Hamza Mwazu of the FCT High Court listened to arguments on the matter. Further details will be provided as the case progresses. The Nigerian Communications Commission has suspended its plan to bar Glow subscribers from calling MTN lines for 21 days. This decision comes after the Commission's earlier pre-disconnection notice issued on January 8, 2024, stating the approval of MTN to commence the phased disconnection of Globacom due to a long-standing interconnection debt dispute. In the latest statement signed by the Director of Public Affairs, Ruben Mocha, the NCC announced the suspension, noting that the parties involved have reached an agreement to resolve all outstanding issues. The phase disconnection has been put on hold for 21 days, starting from January 17, 2024. The NCC emphasized that while it expects MTN and GLOW to resolve their outstanding issues within the given period, interconnect debts must be settled by all operating companies to comply with regulatory obligations. The interconnection dispute in revolves around the fees telecom operators pay each other for calls terminating on their networks. MTN and GLOW have been in conflict over this fee, with MTN briefly disconnecting GLOW subscribers in 2019 over a debt issue. Although GLOW claims to have paid within the allowed window, 
there are still reported issues with inter interest payments. The National Assembly has reportedly intervened in the matter and both parties await guidance from the NCC for a resolution. The suspension aims to prevent potential impacts on consumers while encouraging compliance with regulatory obligations in the telecom industry. Up next are stories on the foreign scene after the break. Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.ubeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Ubeleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Welcome back. On the foreign scene, former President Donald Trump takes to Truth Social to criticize the federal judge presiding over E. Jean Carroll's defamation lawsuit, calling him abusive. Trump accused him of being abusive and rude. Trump claimed the judge denied a one-day delay for him to attend his mother-in-law's funeral, alleging bias and lack of impartiality. Following the death of his mother-in-law, Trump's attorney requested a one-week adjournment of the trial, but U.S. District Judge Louis Kaplan denied the request, citing potential disruptions to the court's operations. In his truth social post, Trump continued to attack the judge, calling him a bad person and an even worse judge. He questioned the timing of the trial, suggesting it could have taken place months ago, and accused the judge of suffering from Trump derangement syndrome. Earlier on the same day, Judge Kaplan threatened to remove Trump from the trial for disruptive behavior, as Trump allegedly talked loudly during Carroll's testimony, referring to the trial as a witch hunt and con job. In entertainment, Arnold Schwarzenegger, actor, former bodybuilder and ex-governor of California, was detained by German customs officers at Munich Airport for failing to declare a valuable luxury watch. Criminal tax proceedings have been initiated against Schwarzenegger, who apparently had not declared the watch upon arrival in Munich, despite planning to leave it in the European Union. Custom authorities stated that if goods remain in the EU, individuals must pay tax and duty on them. The detention reportedly occurred as Schwarzenegger was en route to Austria for a charity auction benefiting climate initiatives and to attend the Hanenkamp ski race in Kitzbühel, Austria. The customs spokesman mentioned that the detention process takes some time but believed that Schwarzenegger would soon be able to continue his journey. The incident highlights the importance of declaring valuable items when entering a country to comply with tax and duty regulations. And in sports, in a pivotal group a encounter in the 2023 AFCON, Super Eagles coach Joseph Pissero emphasizes that he would adhere to his established game plan as his team faces Ivory Coast at the Alsen Otara Stadium in Abidjan. The match is crucial for Nigeria after having failed to secure a victory in their opening game against Equatorial Guinea. The upcoming clash marks the ninth meeting between the Super Eagles and Ivory Coast at the AFCON, with both teams having won three times each and two matches ending in draws. Becerra's team aims for a positive result against Ivory Coast, who won the first game 2-0 against Guinea-Bissau, to rejuvenate their campaign. A victory for Ivory Coast currently leading the group with three points secures their place in the round of 16, while a draw would open possibilities depending on the outcome of the Equatorial Guinea versus Guinea-Bissau match earlier at the same venue. And just before we go, here's a recap of the headlines. Godwin Emefele in court to seek variation of bail conditions. Buhari defends Nairo redesign claims it ensured clean elections. On the foreign scene, Trump criticizes George over funeral attendance during the formation trial. And in sports, Joseph Pissero sticks to game plan ahead of AFCON clash against Ivory Coast. And that's the package on our news bulletin. Kindly follow us on all our social media platforms at Oweleke TV. Our website is www.oweleke.tv. I am Antonia Mokolo. Thank you for watching.